of rhyme is that it really mimics the process we go through as we're learning how to evaluate patients. So keep in mind that at every level, even the very beginning or level of being a reporter, you must be consistently professional and have good interpersonal skills. Because think about it, you can't gather a history well if you're not professional and you don't have good interpersonal skills. So a reporter reliably obtains and communicates clinical findings. They are taking ownership of the clinical findings. And they do that consistently, not just once a day, but consistently on almost every patient. An interpreter can consistently analyze and prioritize patient problems. And so they are taking ownership of explaining things, explaining the diagnosis, um, explaining why they think what they think. A manager consistently proposes reasonable options incorporating the patient preference. So it's not just about having the right management plan, it's about being able to incorporate, well, we could do this, and I discuss the options with the patient, and they really prefer this, and here's why. Um, so they're taking ownership of developing an action plan with the patient. An educator has a consistent level of knowledge of current medical evidence, and they can critically apply it to specific patients. So they know the evidence, they can talk about it, they can discuss it, and then they can take it and apply it to an individual patient. So they are taking ownership of evidence for action and sharing. We have time. I need one more volunteer. Or otherwise, Dr. Apertaki has to come up. Volunteers? Maybe you need dessert. Maybe that's it. You didn't have enough chocolate and sugar. Volunteers. <laughs> we'll be number five, and you can pick if you want to be the teacher or the learner. It's a surgery one. you've seen and kind of how how your day is flowing well I think it's very important for me to know these patients very well I think I told you on the first day that I'm interested in uh, family medicine and and I know that's going to be important for me to be able to take a detailed history and and really understand the patient's social background and and this is this will be very helpful for me for to develop my skills for family medicine and I agree with you that those are really important skills. And you know, even in orthopedic surgery, we do need some pieces of that information. Um, you know, especially if we're planning surgery, some of that social history becomes very important about what's the support system for the patient who's going to provide the care. Um, however, since we are orthopedic surgery, we tr we really do focus very much on what is it that's relevant to why they're here. So I want to encourage you to take a little bit of a different approach because of the type of practice that we have. Um, so pretty much by the time patients come to me, they're almost, we're almost sure they're going to be a surgical candidate because they've seen the PA before they got to me, they saw their family doctor before they got to me, and so they've done pretty much everything else. And so most of the time we're going to be focusing on surgery. So what I'd like to have you do is still get those pieces of information, but keep it very focused. So. What is it in the past history that's going to be relevant and important for the surgery we're planning? Um, so I might care that they have their gallbladder out only from the standpoint of did they have problems or complications from anesthesia or the surgery itself. But I really don't care that they had a toe infection 10 years ago, if it's all better now. Okay. So does that give you a little bit of context and framework? Mm -hmm. Okay. So would you be willing to do that today to really try to focus a little bit more? Um, and then at the end of the day, we'll see how you're doing because I want to make sure you see everything you need to to achieve your objectives for your coaching. Okay, I 
can try. All right, that's good. All right, so what was the wrong? Was this learner a reporter, an interpreter, a manager, an educator? Okay. We'll go backwards. Was, it, was she an educator? Could she talk about evidence and information? Yeah. Um, okay, how about a manager? And we didn't really talk about diagnosis too much, but was there anything there that made you think she could come to conclusions about management plans? No. Okay. So how about an interpreter that she could really take information and come to a diagnosis? No. How about a reporter? How about, well, we're going to assume that the information she was gathering was accurate. So how about a reporter gathering information, reporting information? Probably, because that was our concern, right? She was gathering too much information. <laughs> so you did that pretty easily to decide reporter versus interpreter, manager, educator. And that's the beauty of this framework. It's a synthetic model. It's synthesis of information, which is what we do all day long. <laughs> again and again and again with our patients. It's absolutely focused on the patient. So what I was trying to describe to the student was we want to focus on why the patients are specifically here. So orthopedic surgery office, not really going to worry about that other stuff. Family doctor will take care of it. But the things relevant to their surgery are what we care about. So focus on the patient requires professionalism, requires a high level of interpersonal skills, regardless if you're a reporter, interpreter, manager, or educator. It's descriptive. It describes the behavior of the student. And it's progressive. It's really a building model, right? Because all of us still have to be good reporters. I hope we all are. <laughs> Um, we all have to still be good interpreters, and we really should be beyond the educator stage professionally at this stage in our careers. But we have to do all of those other things well. So you don't leave anything behind, you just keep building on it. Um, when we talk about competencies, the rhyme doesn't really point out specific competencies, but the competencies are integrated into it. So what it allows you to do is make a global assessment and then step back and take apart each competency from that. Caveats to remember, with students, they need to be reasonable. We don't expect a student to always get the right diagnosis or always have the right management plan, as long as it's reasonable. With residents, we do expect them to be right most of the time. Um, the program, um, the clerkship, the residency program, really needs to determine what's common and core and what's uncommon. So even with a third year interpreting resident, uh, God bless you. Thank you. Um, <laughs> No, them knowing how to come to the conclusion that it's thyroid toxicosis and how to manage it, they might not get all that right because you don't see that very often. Now, hyperthyroidism, you would expect them to come to that diagnosis, have a management plan, but thyroid toxicosis, they might need to go look it up, but you'd expect them to know where to go to get it. So again, if it's core, essential content, then they should be right most of the time. It doesn't really focus on technical skills. So if you're talking about procedures, surgery, it doesn't focus on that. However, it's the framework, right? Because you still have to be a reporter, interpreter, manager, educator to be able to do the surgery correctly and make the right decisions. But it just doesn't talk about technical skills. And then finally, I'm going to say about two minutes about competence, because that's all we have left. Um, so at the end of that evaluation form is a place that asks for comments. Please make them. And it doesn't have to be a novel. Um, it just has to be some specific things. So you want it to be specific, commenting on behaviors, positives and negatives, and especially if there was something you addressed. So if there was a problem, if there was a difficulty, you addressed it, and the learner successfully completed whatever the remediation or change was and achieved the objective. You want to be clear about that. That's important. Um, and then some sort of summary statement about their abilities and their progress while they were there. And so use the rhyme format because it's a really good way to summarize the overall. And then think about words like they demonstrated or did not demonstrate at the beginning. Um, their consistency in doing things. Their progress in improvement in doing things. Um, or if there wasn't improvement. And then what recommendations would you make going forward? Is there something they should focus on? Even if they didn't do a bad job, where should their focus be so they continue to learn? We were going to do one more, but you guys had questions, which is good, and you were very participatory. Thank you. So no more role plays. Just a summary. So the cycle, the planning, instruction, 
evaluation can give you that overview to keep you remembering all those pieces you're supposed to do. Evaluation does drive learning. Um, the good news is the goals and objectives determine evaluation, so that's why that objective piece is important. The feedback helps you keep the learner on target and be able to determine what they're achieving and what they're not. And you need observation if you're going to give feedback. Rhymes a framework so you can do that assessment, provide the feedback, provide evaluation. Always include comments. 